Okay, this sermon is entitled, Knowing Them by Their Fruits, The Truth of the Matter. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 126 reads, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Now when it comes to the subject of bearing fruit, to the unsaved false prophet, fruit invariably and always is referring to lifestyle. To simplify, if you're sinning, you are producing bad fruit. And if you're doing good deeds, in a practical sense, that would equate to good fruit. These unsaved devils teach that fruitfulness is the acid or litmus test for determining who's saved and who's not. They go into Matthew chapter 7 with a cursory understanding of verse 16, and they throw this trite expression out, you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruits. And what they mean by this is that if a person, like I said, is living in sin, that's bad fruits, and therefore they're not really saved. And then, of course, good fruits would be they're not sinning, they're living in holiness, or they're repenting of their sins or whatever, and therefore they must be a true convert because they have good fruit. So now let's take a look at what the Bible actually says in Matthew chapter 7. It reads in verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Now there are several problems with the understanding that fruit means behavior. Number one, Matthew chapter 7 is dealing with false prophets. We see this in verse 15. It reads, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So Matthew chapter 7 is not dealing with all Christians in general, like these false prophets are teaching. Because when they throw out the expression, you'll know them by their fruits, they're talking about all Christians holistically. The second problem with this understanding of fruit is that a person's true intentions are being masqueraded by a false prophet. Look at verse 16 again. It reads, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Now what exactly does it mean when it says grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Well, these are actually idioms that denote that something has a friendly or becoming appearance, but yet it's deadly from within. And there's a term known as the Potemkin village, which has a similar meaning. A Potemkin village is a false village. Picture a bunch of cardboard cutouts of buildings that look great on the exterior, but the whole point was that they are hiding something hideous and undesirable. And that's exactly what's going on with false prophets. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. They look great on the exterior, but within they are absolutely wicked. So you can't judge these people based on their outward fruits because they are giving a false pretense. They're hiding their true intentions and motives with a deceptive facade. The third problem with deeming that fruit refers to behavior is that a person's behavior is not empirically ascertainable without constantly putting such people under the proverbial microscope. The fourth problem with this understanding of fruit is that you would have to conclude that everyone has bad fruit incessantly because everyone is a sinner, and that's what bad fruit is according to these unsaved false prophets. And finally, the fifth problem with this is that the Bible uses an all-or-nothing distinction when it describes fruit. Verses 17 and 18 make it clear that a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. So you have this 50-50 ratio. You have either good trees or bad trees. If this were talking about lifestyle or behavior, 
then you would have random amounts of good and bad fruit from all trees. So how do we know that Matthew chapter 7, when it talks about fruit, is referring to a person's teachings, and of course the converts as a result of their teachings? Well, it's simple. You only have two types of people. You have true converts and false converts. A false convert is produced by a false prophet with a false gospel. A true convert is produced by a true prophet of God with the only true gospel out there. That would be free grace. The false teachers, what are they producing? Well, they're producing Calvinists, Arminians, Lordshippers, and other people that are trusting in their works. And see, it takes some type of teaching to produce a convert either way. So now turn over to Matthew chapter 12, and let's take a look at a few verses. It reads in verse 33, Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. So in other words, if you're preaching a works-based gospel, you're going to produce people who believe in a works-based gospel. Same with free grace. Verse 34 O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So clearly we're talking about what a person articulates. And there's no mention of behavior here anywhere. It's simply talking about people speaking. And this is how you can identify who a false prophet is. You don't have time to delve into their personal life to do a bunch of fruit inspecting, but you can listen to them preach. And that's the only way you can ascertain if somebody is a good tree with good fruit or an evil tree with bad fruit. A false gospel comes out of the mouth of an unsaved devil who's a bad tree. The true gospel will always come out of the mouth of a genuine preacher who's actually saved, and that's the good fruit that the scripture is talking about. Otherwise, we can all just be confused all day long trying to analyze one another's personal behavior. It's a bunch of stupidity is what it is. So here's the bottom line. The reason why false prophets believe that fruit has to do with behavior and they use this as the measuring stick to determine if someone is saved is because their false salvation is based on behavior. It's not based on the Word of God. It's not based on the Gospel. It's not based on the clear teachings of Scripture. And see, when your salvation is based on something that does not save, then you will always mistake that for fruit. And that's what's going on here with these unsaved devils. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.